Hey, what is up everyone? This is Melissa Collins with another science video. And today we are going to discuss three basic points about the periodic table. The history, the organization, and the basic trends on the table. So have you ever opened a bag of Skittles and organized them by color? Well, that is exactly what a man named Mendeleev did in 1869, when he sat down and looked at a bunch of elements, which are substances in their purest form. When he sat down and looked at these different elements, he began sorting through them, but it was not based on their color. No, instead, it was based on their properties. Then, being the big brain that he is, he took a closer look at their properties on a molecular level such as the mass, atomic radius, and the number of electrons in their atomic structure. When he did this, he placed them in a chart. When doing this, he noticed that some of the rows and columns skipped numbers. However, based on the other elements surrounding them, he knew exactly what should be there and left the space blank for future discoveries. Meaning, he knew the properties of the elements even before they were discovered. Since then, the periodic table has been constantly evolving to what we know as a periodic table today. Even still, scientists are finding and creating new elements. Everything in this world is a type of combination or compounds of mixtures using basic elements. And these elements are all located on the periodic table. So let's take a look at how these elements are organized and the trends on the periodic table. The periodic table is broken into three main categories, metals, nonmetals, and the undecided metalloids. The metals are located on the left side and they all share common properties such as conductivity of heat and electricity, luster, malleability, and ductility. And as you move to the right on the periodic table, elements become less metallic until you find the nonmetals located on the right side. The nonmetals also share common properties such as insulators, dull, and brittle. And don't forget about the lonely hydrogen, which is the only nonmetal on the left side of the periodic table. Separating these two sides is a stair step, and the elements that lie on this staircase are called metalloids, which share the properties of metals and nonmetals. For example, silicon is a lustrous but brittle and it is only slightly conducts electricity, so we call it a semiconductor. Elements in the same row across are called periods, and just the way Mendeleev designed it, there is a reason. On a molecular level, each element is made of shells, and these shells have electrons on them. As you move across the periodic table, the number of electrons on the outer shell increases. For example, Sodium has one electron on its third outer shell. However, chlorine, further down, is in the same period with the same number of shells, but has seven electrons on its outer shell. Each column of elements is a group, and you will find elements that belong in the same family. Yes, and just like your family shares similar traditions or mannerisms, such as having pizza and game night every Friday, it might be a little bit different than what another family might do. These families on the periodic table share common properties that are much more detailed than just being metals or nonmetals. The families include alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, transition metals, groups B, C, N, O, halogens, and the noble gases. The alkali metals are soft reactive metals. What is reactivity, you may ask? Well, it measures how excited an element is to undergo a chemical change. Anyway, alkali metals become more reactive and softer as you move down its group, making francium the most reactive metal. Alkaline earth metals are hard reactive metals, however they are less reactive than alkali metals. The transition metals are generally less reactive than alkaline earth metals and alkali metals. 
This is because reactivity of metals decrease as you move from the left to the right on the periodic table. All metals are solids except for the transition metal, mercury, which is a liquid at room temperature. Halogens are very reactive nonmetals. They are gases at the top and become solid as you move down. The halogens family possesses the most reactive elements on the periodic table and become less reactive as you move down the group, which is the opposite of the trend in the alkali metals family. Finally, the noble gases are all gases and are unreactive. Reactivity is cool and all, but it's not the only trend on the periodic table. There are many other trends. However, we're going to take a look at two others, atomic mass and density. Remember when I talked about the element having these shells filled with electrons? Well, the periodic table shows the number of electrons by the atomic number, which is usually located above the atomic symbol on an element card. For example, nitrogen's atomic number is seven. Therefore, it has seven electrons. Looking at the periodic table, the atomic number is different for each element, and this number increases as you go across and down the periodic table which is ultimately how the periodic table is organized. Now think about it. We are adding electrons for each element. However, the electrons are not alone. On the inside of the atom, the nucleus holds protons, which match the number of electrons. And it also holds neutrons. All of these particles have their own mass. So as we add more shells and electrons, we are also adding protons and neutrons. And as a result, in most cases, there is an increase in total mass. This mass typically increases along with the atomic number. However, there are a few exceptions due to the number of neutrons. Lastly, density is another trend on the periodic table that increases as you move down each group. Density measures how much matter is in a given amount of space or mass divided by volume. So the more electrons, neutrons, and protons you have, depending on the number of shells it has and how much space it takes up, changes the density. Well, that is all I have for today. You should have learned a little about the history of the periodic table and how elements are organized by families and trends on the periodic table. Until next time, stay curious and remember to take a moment of science.